unearthed Trail of Ibn Battuta was one of the first games developed using the Unity engine to release on the PS3 back on January 3rd, 2014. After its release, it was panned by critics and gamers alike. The complaints piled up, targeting its wonky gameplay mechanics, subpar graphics, awkward animations, and an overall lack of originality. It's currently sitting at a measly 11 out of 100 on Metacritic. Here's the kicker though, in almost all of these reviews, this small little low budget game is being compared to one of the most expensive to produce video game series in the world, Uncharted. Unearthed took on the big leads, and it was never meant to, so unearthing this game 10 years later, let's find out if it's any good. We start our adventure in this office building where we meet Farish Jawad, an Arab fortune hunter with a broken arm. He's on a mission to rescue his kidnapped sister, Danya. He's got a bone to pick with Quentin, who's a rich antique smuggler that kidnapped his sister. In the first level, you get a taste of the game's melee combat and its shooting mechanics. Melee combat is actually kind of fun, though incredibly janky. You just need to keep your distance from enemies and give them a taste of your fists. Blocking, punching, and kicking are all you do for the melee. There's no combos, there's no counters, there's nothing like that, but it gets the job done. Shooting on the other hand is, well, aiming feels wonky, especially when using a controller. It feels like steam input is just emulating a mouse. Thankfully the game does at least have some aim assist mode, so you can get a light snap on your targets. We'll talk about the guns during the next shooting scene, but for now, let's get back to the story for a second. Which, by the way, we're spoiling this whole game in this video. So like in Uncharted 2, the game now rewinds the clock to three weeks earlier. Ferris and Danya find themselves in Egypt, hunting for a hidden treasure stashed in Pharaoh Amos' tomb. He leaves his sister in the Unity Asset Stormobile to scout for any enemies ahead, and inside the tomb you'll solve some straightforward puzzles, you'll dodge some traps, and you'll push around some boulders like they're made of cardboard. The puzzles are unbelievably easy, and they most likely just exist to pad time. Find four artifacts by breaking every box that you see. Navigate over a collapsing floor in pitch black darkness. Dodge some swinging blades, or avoid these falling boulders that we already talked about. There's also one where you control an RC vehicle to get past some doors, just like in Secret Agent Barbie. Anyway, he manages to open the door to the treasure, but unfortunately, just like in Uncharted, it turns out that Pharaoh was followed, and his tomb raiding expedition is rudely interrupted by a bunch of mercenaries. Ferris then has to fight his way back to Danya, and that's where the guns really come in. We've already talked about the aiming, but the guns themselves are equally as brutal. Every machine gun feels the same as every other machine gun. Pistols are the same way as well. They do sound nice, but the environments don't affect the sound in any way whatsoever. Check out the shotgun too, it's probably the worst shotgun I've ever seen in any game. Anyway, eventually, Ferris manages to kill all the mercenaries that are attacking him and makes it to his sister that he left in the car, which... This is Osgur, the mercenary boss, and it's another melee combat scene. Despite being a boss battle, it plays the exact same as every single other melee encounter in the game, but it just takes forever, and well, there's pretty scenery in the background too. After the brawl, Danya appears with a gun. Drop it. Careful with this thing, little one. You might get yourself hurt. Wow. There you go. And they make a speedy getaway on an ATV. Your sister takes the wheel while you're tasked with shooting targets in a painfully generic on-rail section. There's no vehicle control. How do you control this thing? All you can do is aim and fire, nothing more. Cars explode, people die, and yes, you even fight a helicopter. Being developers from Saudi Arabia, these guys presumably have a lot of money, and they can hire Troy Baker, the voice of Joel in The Last of Us and a thousand other things. So, they get away, and Ferris gets a phone call from, yet. Yeah, Hello, this is Faris Chawad speaking. I'm calling you from Morocco, and I believe I have an interesting proposition for you, my friend. A very interesting proposition. So Troy invites them to Morocco to check out a diary left behind by Ibn Battuta. Troy is related to Ibn Juze, the scribe who documented Ibn Battuta's travels. Apparently we just know that. He ends up teasing us with that info and says that it can lead us to a major treasure. And Farah is stoked to go to Morocco because I know I can't resist Moroccan tea. Once you get to Morocco, I hope you like long walk and talk sections because this is probably the longest one I've ever seen in any video game ever. The whole time the characters chat about anything and everything except for the treasure. The weather, how beautiful the views are in Morocco. Ah, uh, the smell of tea is getting stronger. Paris, are you even paying attention? Until they finally get to a tea restaurant where things take a turn. Just one cappuccino for me, please. What? I may occasionally have a change of heart. Sometimes. Here we do learn about the treasure, though. 
So Troy Baker lets us know that he's got the diary safely locked up in a safe in his apartment, where nobody can access it except for himself. So we gotta go to his apartment. Oh my god. Alright, then they embark on another long, chatty walk that's about as exciting as watching paint dry. It leads to Troy's apartment, but it's been broken into, and just like in Secret Agent Barbie, the thief is standing right there. Good thing I have my action suit. Ferris chases him across the rooftops and subdues him, learning that he's handed the diary off to an associate. Why was he in the room? Uh, whatever, only to then have a sniper intervene out of absolutely nowhere, never to be explained or seen ever again. I said talk, or I will- Suddenly, the police are all over the place, surrounding the building, and Farrah needs to sneak past them without getting caught in order to escape. <laughs> sure. How about I just put on my invisibility cloak? We need to put on my stealth outfit. Alright, so yeah, the stealth mission is over if you get caught once, but you can literally just walk past all the cops. There's, like, two cops, and they're looking the wrong way. Farrah makes his way to Troy Baker's car and learns that the diary that was safely locked up in his apartment, well, Troy photocopied it and left it chilling in the glove compartment of his car. <laughs> They then speed away from the cops in a car that handles like absolute garbage, and its speed just painfully sluggish. Apologies for fast forwarding here, but it's the most effective method to illustrate the game's repetitive map layout. You'll find yourself circling aimlessly until the game finally ceases to spawn police units. The same few squares of land are recycled in a roguelike pattern, looping the same plots of land endlessly. Eventually, they do get away though, and they start their adventure to uncover the mysterious findings of Ibn Battuta. Now, this is the worst part of the game. No, not because of the driving, but because this is where the game ends. In May of 2014, Semaphore teased a follow-up. By this point, you'd be safe to assume the game's story is done, never to be concluded, but I've got news. No, it's not episode two, but Semaphore hinted at a complete remake called Rikaz, a non-episodic release coming soon. It was announced in a YouTube comment. Progress screenshots are floating around on the developer's Twitter as well, and their website. Dark, cursed, and valuable thing. Here we come. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. don't go anywhere yet. I'm, I'm still talking about Unearthed. See, there's some really cool unlockable stuff to Unearth here as well. It's mostly concept art and character renders and stuff like that, but ready for the actual best part of this entire game? Beat the game on hard, and you unlock the survival mode. Survival mode transforms this game into a zombie wave shooter. It's stupidly simple, but surprisingly fun. Your sole objective is to fend off waves of zombies, with their numbers and speed increasing with each wave. There's no ability to board up windows or engage in any sort of strategy whatsoever. You just mow down a bunch of the undead using the weapons that they drop. There's even an online leaderboard for the survival mode that remarkably remains online even in 2023. At the end of the day, Unearthed was actually alright. It's not a 1 out of 10 game. Is it the worst Uncharted clone of all time? Well, absolutely. Is it unplayable? No. I lost footage of this game and had to play it from start to finish twice in one day, and even on my second playthrough, I was never bored or frustrated. It's a simple, extremely generic game designed specifically to profit off the success of Uncharted at the time and tells a story. It's just a shame this story ends on such a brutal cliffhanger. I'm personally kind of excited for Rikaz. And it's available in bookstores today. This shawarma looks real tasty. I usually prefer chicken though. Hey kitty kitty kitty. Kinda reminds me of the cat I had in my childhood. The weather looks really great this time of year. Combine that with the scenery, and well. Ah, my uncle used to own a store in this market. He was actually doing really good back in the days. Sadly, uh, he had a dispute with his partner and they closed it down. <laughs> All right, now you can go. Thanks for sticking around, though. If you like the video, feel free to do the things. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. But all right, that's all I got. Love you guys. Peace.